Greetings, friends, and welcome to Mark's Vinyl Collection, episode number 13. And as you probably expected, at this time of year, what could it possibly be but the top 10 of 2017 as picked by me? So, let me preface this first by saying, um, I've been really busy this year with my own music and um, releasing a couple of albums both on CD and vinyl, so it's taken up a lot of time, and uh, I also have a pretty active fan club, sorry I don't like using that word fan club, forgive me, supporters club that I have, and you know it's been eating up time, uh, time that maybe I could have used for checking out new music, and really I don't mind because I've been enjoying this trip just immensely, but I have gotten quite a bit of music, surprisingly enough. Um, Vinyl-wise, I probably bought over a hundred albums. I mean, I haven't gone through them all, but I've bought them. And uh, a lot of records that are going to be in my, well, the top ten that I'm going to have are the music that I've been listening to quite a bit. And let me just also preface by saying that I'm not going to be showing any vinyl, mainly because I have these either both on vinyl and CD, or the artist didn't put a vinyl release of this and I just love the music and it's not important to me whether it's on vinyl or not. Shock horror. Um, I do know that this is supposed to be a vinyl uh, channel so to speak but th to me it's no surprise that there's a lot of people out there like me who also support the CD medium as well and I have no issue with buying CDs as long as the music is good I will support it. So for ease of showing the top 10 and also reference the ones that I do, do have also on vinyl as well but enough of my yimmer yammering let's get on to my top 10. These are albums that came out in 2017 and ones that I listen to very regularly um, and that's saying a lot like I said I bought over a hundred albums this year and uh, these are the ones that have been getting regular play. So let's start off with a record that came out on April 22nd, 2017, which is Record Store Day. So what could that be? Well, everybody knows I'm a huge David Bowie fan, so I've got to be talking about David Bowie's Cracked Actor. Now let's see if I can get this finally figured out for you people. There you go. Now this is uh, a live concert from... Los Angeles in 1974. I believe, now correct me if I'm wrong, that this was before the uh, David Live era, where he started getting a little more uh, R&B-ish. I think this is like the last little remnants of the old persona before he got all R&B-ish. So I really like this concert. Um, I like it far better than David Live, to be quite honest. And, uh, there you go. It is two CDs. Well, let's see if I can just pull out one of them just to show you. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, <clears throat> Like I said, I'm a huge David Bowie fan. I love his work. Uh, like I said, this is uh, much better than David Live, I feel. It's uh, more more of what I come to expect from David Bowie. David Live kind of threw me for a bit of a loop as he kind of really changed some of the arrangements of some of the songs, some of the songs I really enjoyed. So this is why I like this version better. Next one, number nine. This record came out October 20th of this year, 2017. And I get another uh, artist that I'm very, very much a big fan of. And he's been known when he was alive, so this should give you a clue. He's no longer with us. To have some of the best Halloween concerts ever. <clears throat> and this album is a tribute to one of those shows. I'm talking about Frank Zappa. This is Frank Zappa, Halloween, 77. 
from Philadelphia. No, the pal sorry, from the Palladium in New York City. This is a Halloween show. I got the three CD version of this. There is a deluxe version of this that comes with a, a zap, a mask. And the funny thing is it has a version that, that, that deluxe version is on a USB stick that has 128 songs and 24 bit uh, WAV file audio, which is interesting because <clears throat> this is already a pretty long album as it is. I mean, this is like three CDs and each CD has at least 60 minutes of music on. So it's pretty lengthy. <clears throat> um, it has a lot of the songs that you would expect, Peaches and Regalia, Disco Boy, The Black Page, Part Two. Uh, great stuff. And like I said, I, I love his packaging. Hats off to the Zappa family um, for doing such a great job in repackaging or releasing some of this material that's never been released before. <laughs> I mean, this is release number 110, I believe. Let's see if you can see that. But trust me when I tell you that if you look at that spine right at the very top there, it says 110k. There's a hundred, this is like the 110th release that they put out of his catalog. So that's very, very impressive in my opinion. And uh, you cannot go wrong with that record if you want to hear Zappa at the height of his performing best. And in fact, let me see something here. I'm curious who is on this. Performance wise, okay, so we've got Zappa, we've got Adrian Ballou on guitar and vocals, Tommy Mars on keyboards, Peter Wolf on keyboards, Ed Mann on percussion, he's awesome, Patrick O'Hare on bass, and Terry Bozio on drums. So, what a band! What a band! And a special guest, you have Roy Estrada, who is a former Mothers of Invention from the early, early days. So, brilliant. If you like Zappa, get it. Number eight. This should become as no surprise to anybody who knows me and knows my love of the band Rush. This year they had the 40th anniversary of this album, Farewell to Kings. Uh, I love this record. It's maybe not my favorite sonically sounding wise. And this is only, that's my really my only uh, strike against this release because when I took a look at this, it clearly says on there, Disc 1 original album. Now why they didn't do any sort of a remaster or remix of it for the anniversary was beyond me. But it still sounds good. But the real reason, folks, to get this album, and here's uh, some shots of how it looks. Actually, let me fold this part out. first here. So as you can see, that's in their live uh, element. And it is his three CDs. Here's two of them. There's a third. Um, the reason to buy this record is for the live music, which is on disc two and three. This is a complete show from the Hammersmith Odeon, February 20th, 1978. Um, this came out on a third disc on different stages. And I believe it was 1996 that live album came out for Rush, different stages. And it had only part of this show. This is the complete show, which added back 2112, Closer to the Heart, Lakeside Park, and Cygnus X1 is all on this. And it is brilliant it is fantastic there's also some uh covers done by other bands uh dream theater doing xanadu <clears throat> big wreck it's a band from canada doing close to the heart uh the trues doing cinderella man they're another canadian band <clears throat> alan jones jonas doing madrigal and a sort of odd edit of cygnus x1 <clears throat> on theirs which is called cygnus x2 the covers i could take or leave the album, I love it. I have it on many different formats, but really, I bought this because I wanted that live show, and it does not disappoint. 
I just totally blasted it in my car one day, listened to the whole thing, and it was incredible. And it gets spun frequently still in my car. That's number eight. Now, <clears throat> number seven is going to be an interesting pick. And no doubt, many of you will have no clue who this band is. And this is why I'm going to pick them. And they are my number seven band. They're a band from Brampton. <clears throat> they are a band that I have direct connection to in that my nephew played bass for this band for a while. He's no longer in the band anymore. But uh, I had the uh, privilege of mixing and mastering this album for them. And I didn't pick it solely for that. I picked it because honestly, and I can look you square in the eyes and tell you that this is probably one of the best uh, sci-fi type prog metal albums that I've heard in a very, very long time. And these guys are young. I'm talking like 22 years old. Three piece from Brampton called Droid. Terrestrial Mutation. As I said, I did work on this record. I mixed it. I mastered it for them. It sounds incredible. <clears throat> the record label that they're on really liked it as well. I'm glad to say this was on a German record label, I believe. If you take a look there, mixed and mastered Mark Anthony K. Um, I would highly recommend getting this. If you like Voivod type of metal, this will be right up your alley. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. I love it. <clears throat> um, there's some 10 minute songs like Mission Drift on here. And uh, <clears throat> there's some of the shorter songs on here are awesome as well. But they have like two 10 minute long pieces. Really, really good stuff. I can't speak highly enough of this. This is a fantastic record. <clears throat> I highly recommend it. If you can still get it, go to their Bandcamp site, look for Droid. And I believe that they also have a pre-order going on for a vinyl version, a colored vinyl version of this record, which of course I've already put my order in for. So, <coughs> Droid, what a great record. Next is a record that I got to very late, admittingly, to the party, because I believe this album came out, yeah, October 20th. The same day as the Zappa record came out, but I totally bypassed this record at first, and that's Sons of Apollo. Jesus, it's glare, there we go. Psychotic Symphony. As we all know, this is the brainchild of Mike Portnoy and Derek Sherinian. Those names will be familiar to you if you are longtime Dream Theater fans like I am. Um, Derek Sherinian joined the band for their third album. Technically, fourth album, uh, Falling Into Infinity. <clears throat> and while this has some resemblance to that, especially when you have Mike Portnoy drumming, you can't help but have that style of drumming very present on everything that he does, especially if it's progressive-based, <clears throat> which this definitely is. And uh, Billy Sheehan on bass. So again, you have one of the better rhythm sections, I'd say, in... <clears throat> this style of music. There he is right there. But uh, <clears throat> I'd say uh, there's Derek. Derek Sherinian is probably one of my favorite keyboard players right now. I love his style of playing. I love his Hammond organ playing. And I love his lead, his keyboard lead work. It sounds so electric guitarish. It's unbelievable. Sometimes I even get confused thinking that it might even be a guitar when it's really him on uh, doing some sort of line on a Moog or a Nord or something. It sounds fantastic. <clears throat> He's a great player. Um, <clears throat> there are tendencies to sound like I said, like Dream Theater in this very much so. <clears throat> just, that st just that style of over-the-top progressive music. There's Ron Thal, a.k.a. Bumblefoot. But to me, <clears throat> the real um, <clears throat> star of this album and the thing that makes it different enough to not make it sound like a dream theater wannabe, in my opinion, is right here. <laughs> this guy. Jeff Scott Soto. Now, I've loved this guy singing as far back as when I first heard him when he was singing for Ingve Malmsteen. I had a video of him in Tokyo when they were just touring the newly released Marching Out album, which was the second record that Ingve put out by himself. 
and he was the lead singer at that time for him. So I was a fan of Jeff Scott Soto as far back as then. Uh, the opening track, God, God of the Sun, is incredible. Opus Maximus is a great instrumental. The last song, everything in between, is good. It's what you expect of a band that has these caliber of musicians in it. If you like progressive metal uh, or rock, or if you like stuff that has a lot of keyboard work as well in it, but it's really cool keyboard work, you want this album. And that is my number six pick for this year. My number five pick of the year has Derek Shireen as well in it, funny enough, and that is Black Country Communion 4. Now, when I first got this record, I was a little uh, unsure about it at first. This record came out in, on September 22nd. I didn't get this record until November or so. And uh, I mainly got it because of my love for Glenn Hughes. He's a great singer. I love his singing. I have his autograph on my wall with a really nice pictures I got when I met him at the NAMM convention in California. Um, the man is in his 60s and sings absolutely phenomenal. He almost now sounds like a Chris Cornell. Sorry, let me correct that. Chris Cornell sounds a lot like him, or sounded a lot like him. Um, fantastic playing. This is a lot more blues-based, uh, but it's very heavy sounding. Kevin Shirley's producing it, so you know it's going to sound good. My only gripe is that the mastering is a little squashed for my liking, uh, but <clears throat> it's not so bad as records in the past, <clears throat> Death Magnetic. Um, so it, I can't complain too much, but it's a great record. This, if you were to compare it to, for example, uh, you know, if you compare it to uh, Sons, of, uh, Sons of Apollo, this is more bluesy, this is more progressive. <clears throat> so, I mean, you have on here, you know, Glenn, you have Glenn Hughes, you have Joe Bonamassa, you have, uh, what's his name again? Jeez, I'm terrible with names. Derek Sherinian on keyboards and the drummer. What's his name again? I know he's a uh, buddy's son. Jason Bonham. I know people are already probably throwing eggs at me. Jason Bonham. And Jason does a great job on this record. <clears throat> and one of the things, technically speaking, that I've always been curious about, I wish I could one day get a hold of Kevin Shirley and ask him, is what the deal is with his floor tom sound on this record. Because every time he seems to hit that floor tom it has this almost bomb like aftertone to it like boom and it just keeps ringing on so i don't know if that's his natural drum sound almost sounds like he added a trigger to the sound of his drum just that's total production geek talk so never mind that so that was number five so let's get now to number four right four three two yeah two four now I'm a huge Yes fan. I love Yes. They're probably one of my favorite bands in the whole world. Um, they've had many people in the band throughout the years. But if there's one person who's been pretty stable in this band, and uh, one who's given them their identity, I think, a lot of ways, is Steve Howe. And he released an album this year. Let me check to my cheat notes here. And his records I'm going to be talking about came out on August 11th, 2017. <laughs> This is another three CD set. This is Steve Howe's Anthology 2. Groups and, Jesus, sorry. Groups and Collaborators. Groups and Collaborations, yeah. This is really, really, really good. Now this gives you an oversight of pretty much everything that he's done in the beginning. From the syndicates there. Yeah, to a bunch of stuff. To yes, to Asia, GTR, um, the In Crowd, Tomorrow. You know, he's, he's been in so many different things. Uh, and all of them have been pretty good. Uh, Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, Howe. And those are the first two discs. You have many different songs from those different lineups. Of course, you have the fantastic Roger Dean artwork. Here's the man. And here's the other G 
two discs. <clears throat> this is fantastic. I absolutely adore this record. Um, it just shows how much one person can affect a band. If you listen to the contributions that he's made on guitar for all the stuff that's on here, you start to see a pattern emerge of Steve Howe. Now, I did say I was going to mention of the records that I've spoke of already, which ones I had on vinyl. Now, just to recap, number 10 was David Bowie's Cracked Actor. I don't have that on vinyl. Zappa's Halloween 77. I don't have that on vinyl because it never did come out on it. Rush, the 40th anniversary Feral the Kings. It has come out on vinyl. I don't have it yet. Droid is coming out on vinyl. I have bought it, pre-ordered it. It's not available yet. Sons of Apollo and Black Country Communion both are not on vinyl. I haven't seen them if they have been, but I don't see them and I don't have it. And Anthology 2 is not on vinyl. So really only one and two of my picks are, I have a vinyl release and I have those. But we're going to talk about first number three. And this one is going to be maybe a surprise for some people because Anybody who knows me from my podcast that I do, whether it's the Kiss FAQ or the Yes Music Podcast, I rarely ever spoke about this group. And I have spoken about the producer who's worked on this in a very negative light, mind you. But on this record, I think he did an absolutely brilliant job. So that can mean only one record that came out in 2017. In fact, it came out April 7th, 2017, and that's the Purple Infinite produced by the one and only Bob Ezrin. Now, this album absolutely floored me. I went out and bought it. Uh, I watched some of their uh, press, uh, I guess, press interviews that they did to promote this record. And after I heard them talking about it, I decided I would give it a shot. And I'm very glad I did. For the exception of Roadhouse Blues, everything on this album is incredibly good. I liked the whole concept of how they did this with the whole, you know, deep north feel to it. The icebergs and, you know, the logo being broken into the ice with the icebreaker there. And even their band photographs I thought was absolutely fantastic in keeping with <clears throat> the sort of feel of the record. There they are. All, uh tundra like looks like they're out in siberia or something but this album is fantastic and again for people who are in their 60s and 70s some of these guys i mean this record is so good i mean i haven't heard bands in their 30s that make music as good as this so i have to say if you like deep purple and you want to pick up a record a newer record from them and be just as impressed as you would with maybe some of their older catalog. This is definitely a record to pick up. Bob Ezrin did a great job with this. The production is fantastic. It suits the music. And that's really only my only gripe with Bob Ezrin. And it always had to do with Kiss. The albums that he did with Kiss I thought never suited his production. But his Floyd stuff, brilliant. This Brilliant. Alice Cooper, fantastic. So I'd have no problem really with the man at Bob, Bob Ezrin. But whenever he touches something by Kiss, I don't like it. There we go. The secret weapon of this band, Steve Morris on guitars. I'm sorry. Really, when he joined the band, it was Richie who? Richie who? Blackmore? Who's that? Um, yeah, I think he's done a great job in that in this band, and uh, he's definitely uh, earned his keep. Let's just put it that way. So, Deep Purple, Infinite, brilliant album. Go and get it. Number three. So we're up to the last two. Number two is a record that I bought with a very heavy heart. Now, let me just take a quick sip here. Just give me one second. The records I bought with a very heavy heart. 
mainly because one of the people involved in it died rather unexpectedly in the making of it. Well, no, not in the making of it, excuse me. He died after it was done, but shortly before the release of it. Um, and it also involves the, per the partner who is involved in this record is the guy's father. So this was definitely probably a difficult album for him to do any sort of press for. So I won't make you guess anymore. I'm talking about Virgil and Steve Howe and the album Nexus. This is an instrumental album, which was based off of Virgil Howe's musical experiments that he was working on, all kinds of different ideas and loops that he made, and he gave it to his father. Steve kind of fashioned them into songs proper, added his guitar, and it turned out to be a absolutely brilliant release. It sounds fantastic. Kind of better. There we go. It sounds great. Um, every song is a winner in my opinion. Come on. And uh, it's very spacey, as you can tell by some of the song titles on here. Uh, Hidden Planet, Leaving Aurora, Nick Star, Moon Rising. It's very deep space-ish. Um, this CD... You're probably wondering why I have it in a plastic case. This CD came with the vinyl version of the record. So if you're going to buy any version of this album, go out and buy the vinyl version because you will get the CD included in it. And like I said, this album is really good. Um, I can't help but when I listen to it, not only be a little bit saddened, but also feel a lot of happiness and joy in this. It really sounds like they had a lot of fun doing this father and son sort of project. It was excellent. Um, it's a great release. I'm hoping that maybe Virgil had some other music left over that Steve can maybe take and make a Nexus 2 out of. I'm not counting on it, but I really hope that there's something available for us to listen to further from this duo. Okay, so this brings me to number one. And this, to me, was a complete no-brainer. Once this album came out, I knew right away it was going to be my number one. Because after I heard it, the performance was stunning. Um, the mixing and mastering was top-notch. The best they've had on a live record, probably in 30 years plus. Um, and the material that they played on this record, they played with real care and real respect to the lineage of it. And I love every second of it. The packaging is fantastic. And this is probably the only record I've got that I have in multiple different mediums. I have the digital album version. I have the CD, which I'm going to show you now. And I have the three LP vinyl version and I could be only talking about one album, and that is Yes, Topographic Drama, Yes, Live Across America. This is a two-CD set featuring drama in its entirety and Tales from Topographic Oceans, side one and four, with part of part three in there being uh, Leaves of Green, and they end with Roundabout and Starship Trooper. <coughs> I know that there's lots of debate about yes, who is the real yes and ARW are the real yes blah 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 and Frank, quite frankly to me there's no there's no debate. This is yes. ARW are an offshoot of yes. Um, this to me is the heart of yes and I think that when the dust has settled years from now this yes will be continuing Probably with some of the members that are in it now. Billy Sherwood, John Davison. I could see being in here for a while yet. Uh, Dylan Howe has started to play drums here and there for them. So I wouldn't be surprised if he starts playing drums for them long term. But anyways, let's forget about the future. Let's talk about the right now. And this album is the number one pick for me. 
for best release of 2017 easily easily i mean you want to listen to a fantastic live album i'm holding it right here folks and the artwork is stunning and on vinyl it's even better i mean having that artwork in you know large to see in front of you unbelievable so i'm just gonna hype this as much as possible because i do think that this is the best album a uh, hats off to the gauntlet gauntlet brothers sorry i keep slicing up those names the gauntlet brothers for doing a fantastic job on the packaging design of this it's one of my favorite packages of a cd release that's come out in a long long time but to me more importantly is what's inside here and what lies on these discs the performances are unbelievable drama has never sounded so good tales from topographic oceans has never sounded so good really what more can i say but this is the best album in my opinion to come out in 2017 from the records that i have in my collection and from what's come out this year like i said i know lots of people listen to many other types of music there's rap jazz all kinds of stuff and there are incredible albums that have come out from those genres as well but this is the music that i listen to this is the music that i love so for me this is numero uno and if you like the music that i make a lot of this stuff that you heard or a lot of the stuff that i just showed can probably be found somewhere in the dna of my music as well so you're pretty much seeing what feeds my musical interest too so that's it that's my list for 2017 i hope you enjoyed it and uh, there will be probably one more video before the end of this year i'm going to do a quick uh roundup of 2017 from a project gemini perspective next and that should be up in the next day or two hopefully before the new year's if not maybe a day after new year's so until then this is mark anthony k saying have a fantastic new year and i'll talk to you all soon bye for now